Country roads take me home. Grab your banjo and set your sights on West Virginia because mark my words, Wasteland Warfare is getting a Fallout 76 expansion. Hey there Wastelanders and welcome back to War Games News Radio. And yes, you heard that right. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what's coming down the pipeline next for Fallout Wasteland Warfare. And it all comes from this lovely image. If you tuned into the ModCon live stream back in September, then you might have seen this beauty come across your screen at the end of the new Wasteland Warfare reveals. As I'm recording this video, Modiphius is in the process of rolling out the Nuka World wave for the game, which started hitting shelves in October. But we got this picture as a teaser of what's coming next after the Wave 9 Nuka World expansion, and while the Modiphius crew haven't officially said that Follow 76 is around the corner, this photo is all but a dead giveaway. So let's break down this teaser and take a look at some past hints and clues that Modiphius have left along the way to see if we can't read the tea leaves together and find out what might be coming in this expansion. Over a year ago now, Modiphius started laying some hints about possible content coming to Wasteland Warfare through their 3D printable terrain files that featured pieces only found in Fallout 76. We also got some clues as to the scope of this new Wave 10, which is going to be a full year's worth of releases, which is twice as long as most expansions waves that we've seen so far for the game. If you want to take a look at some of those hints in greater detail, then check out the link popping up here. And while those STL hints have been great, I think this teaser actually tells us more than we might think about what to expect in this wave, as in past waves, the expansion book cover art has featured a lot of minis and units that can be found in the wave, and I have no reason to believe that this upcoming 76 edition will be any different. So here's my first prediction right here and now. If it's featured on this photo, it's showing up in this Fallout 76 Appalachian expansion, whatever they end up calling it. If it's in the photo, it's in the game. And if that measuring stick holds up, I think we have a pretty good idea of all of the creatures, weapons, and units coming our way. Believe it or not, what caught my eye first on here was the Sheep Squatch on the left-hand side, which appears to be the actual flesh and blood cryptid from Fallout 76, and not the robotic Assaultron version if you're familiar with that super fun quest. I really hope we get to see one of these hit the tabletop, even though I do think it would be cool to see the Assaultron mechanized version in this wave as well, but maybe that's better for a kit bashing project. But the Sheep Squatch isn't the only cryptid on this cover, as on the opposite side we see the Mothman, a staple in West Virginian folklore and Fallout 76 favorite, along with a Mothman cultist. So this leads me to believe that we're going to see the Mothman cult as an entire playable faction, and hopefully not just a big bad monster. And if that's not enough Mothman proof for you, then Modiphius has already released a massive print at home STL pack dedicated to the Mothman cult. It includes all sorts of creepy totem poles and scenery and scatter bits, so I'm expecting big things from the Mothman cult, and possibly a few different stat cards for different versions of the Mothman himself. Heading back over to our teaser photo here, we can also see a freaking scorch beast swooping in from above. I've long said that if Modiphius does do Fallout 76, that the Scorch Beast is an auto-include. It's probably the most iconic creature from the game, and I love my big creepy crawlies, so really excited to see what possibilities a Scorch Beast model and unit could bring to the game. If we get a Scorch Beast, and fingers crossed on that one, I'm guessing it would probably have to be somewhere in size between like the Behemoth and a Myrlurk Queen. I would be surprised if it was as big as the Queen, but I feel like it would probably need to be in that ballpark. Now, this cover image might also be of a Scorch Beast Queen, but I've got a gut feeling that we'll just be seeing the standard version in this wave, as it looks to include a good number of beasties already. But trust me, I would very much like to be wrong on this, as seeing both a Scorch Beast Queen and a standard Scorch Beast would be just wild. We also see some creepy looking claws reaching out from the front of the book, and I think that might be the hands of a Scorched. You can find these ghoul-like, semi-intelligent creatures all over Appalachia, and I'd be surprised if they didn't show up as either a creature unit, or maybe even their own faction. Because think about it, how cool would it be to have a giant Scorched Beast model with a bunch of mini Scorched running around, tearing up the battlefield? That's right out of the game, and I'm here for it. Turning our eyes to these Vault Dwellers in the center here, we see that one of them is wielding a chainsaw, which is a melee weapon that you can find in Fallout 76, so I'm really hoping we get to see this 
this as both a weapon option on your models and a weapon card. Now, Modivius have already hinted that Wave 10 is going to be huge and take over pretty much all of 2024 for the Wasteland Warfare releases. That schedule usually involves two new boxes of releases per month, and if I carry the one and do my math, that means that's 24 boxes a year, give or take. And with Modifius putting so much time and resin into this one single wave, it only makes sense that it's going to be Fallout 76. There's a ton of content to pull from. It's the most recent Fallout game, and it's probably what Papa Todd would want them to do. As far as stupid gimmicks goes, I assure it's the best fucking one I have ever seen. It is awesome. Wall miners, Grafton Monster, Flatwood Monster, Snally Gasters, the Giant Wendigo Colossus, Giant Mega Sloth, the Responders, Appalachian Brotherhood of Steel, the freaking Enclave. There is everything in this game. And we've actually already seen some Fallout 76 era sculpts for both the Brotherhood and Enclave back in the Capital Wasteland wave. So why not give these two factions some of their own love in Fallout 76? Maybe we even get them as individual factions. Now we should probably address the giant radioactive elephant in the room. Fallout 76 is very much a love it or hate it entry into the Fallout franchise. And I can already hear a bunch of the OG isometric purists ranting and raving about about how we're gonna get a full year of Fallout 76 content and we still haven't seen Marlin from Fallout 2 show up as a companion with his own faction of new Reno drug runners or whatever. Look, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to feel, but let's think about this critically and also from a business standpoint. Fallout 76 is the Fallout game right now. Full stop. And honestly, I'm not the world's biggest Fallout 76 fan. There's a list my arm long of stuff I would rather see come into the game, but I'm not the guy in charge. And when it comes right down to it, I will take more Fallout minis over less Fallout minis any day of the week. And it's also worth noting that Modivius hasn't confirmed any of this. This is just what I can tell so far based on what we've seen. So maybe it won't be a full year of Fallout 76 content and we'll just dip our toes into the Appalachian waters before heading off elsewhere. Or maybe we'll see this long anticipated top up wave of older waves getting new releases. Either way, I'm excited to see what's coming down the pipe and I'm already dreaming about how I'm gonna paint my sheep squatch. Well, that's all in the rumor mill for this one, Wastelanders. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button, subscribe, and make sure you turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. And if you really like what we do here on the channel, then follow the link in the description to our Patreon page or click the little join button down here on YouTube where for as little as $3 a month Canadian, you can help us make more videos more often for you to enjoy. And you get all the kickbacks like double entry into future giveaways, access to polls which help us decide the direction of content here on the channel and you just might end up as a named character in a future battle report or live stream. So thank you again so much for watching and for staying tuned because as always WGNR will be back.